Welcome back to another fan favorite episode. In this one, I make chlorinated vegetable oil. I want to see if this is simply an analog of brominated vegetable oil or it has its own set of unique properties. The materials you need are hemp oil, pool tablets, and hydrochloric acid. The first thing I'm going to do is bag the tablet. This will give me control when I hammer it. I do low yet firm hits to pulverize the gravel while minimizing punctures. Eventually, I get a nice fluffy bag of trichlor powder. I pour about half into a 500 milliliter flask. An even smaller flask can be used to further force the gas into its intended target. In another 500 milliliter flask, I add 100 milliliters of hemp oil followed by 150 milliliters of water. A little background, this was actually a mistake as I forgot water causes the chlorohydrin reaction. Still, I decided to keep going just to see what chlorohydrated hemp oil looks like. In an addition funnel, I add 150 milliliters of 31% hydrochloric acid. I slowly drip it into the trichlor powder. This quickly creates green chlorine gas. In my mixture flask, air is quickly being evacuated as chlorine displaces it. Eventually, a green tinge forms over the mixture. Lots of chlorine is burgeoning in the reaction flask. This is what my setup looks like. As you can see, the reaction is quite fast. Soon the hemp oil takes on a lighter green color and greater opacity. Eventually the oil becomes almost marbled and appears rather interesting. What's happening here is really cool. First, the extra electrons in the double bond pull away one of the chlorines in the molecule. This forms a strained three ring system. Because oxygen is more electronegative than chlorine, it will attack one of the carbons. The leftover chloride takes water's extra hydrogen to form hydrochloric acid, hence chlorohydrin. 20 minutes later, the reaction has released so much heat the flask is almost untouchable. My little thermometer is registering beyond 40 C. Another thing to note is its increased density. The oil has now swapped places with the water, residing on the bottom of the flask. There is a greater chlorine haze too. This implies the vegetable oil's double bonds have all or almost all been transformed into chlorohydrin groups. The exhaust pipe is also releasing more chlorine gas. The wet tile surrounding it has become acidic. When bubbling slows, I remove the flask and plunge the pipe in water. Because I don't want to subject my body to two questionable eggs, I will instead try to make an epoxide with my now chlorohydrated hemp oil. In theory, adding a base like sodium hydroxide should deprotonate the hydroxyl group in the oil. This negatively charged oxygen should in turn substitute chlorine atom, forming an epoxide ring. The kicked off chloride will go on to form table salt. However, that does not happen, I think. The oil has definitely lost some mass, becoming less dense and sitting back on top of the water. The butter stuff also seems to be more free-flowing. Now that I think of it, I wonder if it made like a weird soap. I'm going to heat it to see what happens. After two hours of moderate heating, the butter layer seemed to have shrank and turned red. I think at this point I'm just hydrolyzing the oil. I'm sure if I continue it will become one weird layer, so I just discard it. Before I perform the chlorination, I take the temperature of my hemp oil. This gives us a baseline for what comes next. After, I perform the same process but without water. Air is quickly evacuated as chlorine evolves. The reaction proceeds almost too fast. Chlorine evolves quite quickly despite the steady drip rate. I eventually do close the funnel for a bit. When dripping slows, I take the temperature. As you can see, it has gotten quite hot. What's happening here is similar to the chlorohydrin, but with a catch. The extra electrons in the double bonds first pull away one of the chlorines. This forms a strained three-ring system. Without water, the chloride atom is now the most electronegative species. It attacks one of the carbons, disrupting the ring. Since the chlorine atoms are in each other's vicinity, this is called a vincinal dichloride. Eventually, the chlorinated oil becomes very dark red, much like brominated oil. Just by the bubble formation, I can tell it is very thick and tarry. Chlorine evolution is still going though. Within the hour, bubbling has either slowed or the oil is too thick to allow reasonable pumping. I know I have chlorinated hemp oil because beyond the color change, it is also denser than water. It is even very viscous. A quick chill practically immobilizes the oil, allowing me to easily decant the water. Now for the fun part. I get my stove heated and plop a nice spoonful of oil on a cast iron pan. It's the only pan I can experiment on anyways. I plop an egg on there and fry it for a bit. Then I flip it and cook it some more. 
Don't you love to hear that crackle? It almost makes you think I'm cooking with normal, non-chlorinated oil. Anyways, I finally plate this abomination. It has more grease than I like, so I pat it down some. Well, I finally passed 1,000 subscribers. Um, now standing at 2,700 actually, and I thought it was about time to do a follow-up that's been desperately anticipated. But instead of brominated vegetable oil, I have chlorinated vegetable oil, and I used it to cook an egg in it. So let's see if it tastes normal or disgusting. Let's open this bad boy up. Kind of gooey, that's pretty good. Uh, let's just take off the shrimp. I can't believe I'm actually going to eat this. This is so disgusting. Could have used some salt. Let's try more of the greasy end. Again, you might think this is dangerous. Um, it's not lethally dangerous, but it is not advised. It's about as dangerous as smoking a cigarette. This tastes like much actually. Oh, oh. There it is. There's the sting. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, we're done. Wow. Um, maybe the chlorine destabilized. And I don't even have like a, a chaser. We're done. Wow, that is disgusting. That is so bitter. It is like, you, you'll notice, I didn't salt the egg at all. And it just salted itself almost. It's maybe the chlorine added like a chlorine sort of flavoring salt, but it, that is, wow, that is disgusting. Um, this, oh my goodness. Well, let's see if this will cleanse my palate. It's less greased part. But I already, I already feel it. Wow. That is disgusting. Why did I agree with this? Better. Better. I think I just have to stray away from the greasy part. Because that is just... It's like tar, it's disgusting. It tastes like bitter tar, really. Um, but that wasn't too repulsive, that bite actually. It wasn't too repulsive. Um, obviously this doesn't taste like much, and I, I'm, I for one never liked runny egg yolks, so let me just excuse that part. Um, but I think I'm done. I don't, I don't really wanna eat this. This is disgusting. Yeah, I'm done. So, uh, that was kind of underwhelming to say the least. Disgusting to say the most. Um, the brominated vegetable oil was much better. I don't know how, I don't know why. Maybe that's why they use it in those citrus beverages before it got outlawed. Um, as for my next part of the series, the final part, making iodinated vegetable oil, I'm going to push that off until we reach 10,000 subscribers just to buy myself some time and spare my tongue from eating any more of this bitter garbage. Don't forget to subscribe to Molecular Playground. Don't forget to like this video. I'm doing this for science. I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this for my fans. This is the a fan favorite episode and I've been kind of looking forward to this, but now I kind of regret it. See you later.